Psalm 25 verse 14. Zaburi 25 mstari wa 14. This is a by the way. Hii ni kupitia tu. But it's a rhema word for somebody. Hili ni neno la wakati kwa mtu. Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. Verse 14. Mstari wa 14. Please give me in King James. I love it in King James. Weka kwenye tafsiri ya King James na ipenda hivyo. Give me in King James. Nipe kwa tafsiri ya King James. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Siri ya Bwana iko kwa mchao naye atawajulisha agano lake. Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. God has secrets. Mungu ana siri. And he doesn't just reveal them to anybody. Na huwa hafunulii mtu yeyote tu. And today I want to give you two secrets. Na leo nataka niwapatie siri mbili peke yake. In fact, the Bible says is the glory of God to keep things secret. Hakika Biblia inasema kwamba ni utukufu wa Mungu kuweka mambo kwa usiri. But it is the glory of kings to go searching them out and you know exposing them announcing them but it's the glory of God to keep things secret. Lakini ni utukufu kwa wafalme kuzitafuta na kuziweka wazi na kujivunia. Lakini ni utukufu kwa Mungu anapoziweka kuwa siri. I'll say that again. Nitarudi hivyo tena. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with they that give him reverence. Biblia inasema kwamba siri zake Mungu ziko na wale watu ambao wanamcha people that honor him watu wanaomheshimu people that sanctify him in Wa, their lives watu ambao wanajitakasa kwake maishani mwao and i'm going to give you two mtawapatia siri mbili that he gave me many years ago alizonipa miaka mingi iliyopita are you ready for this je uko tayari kwa hii the secrets of the lord are with they that give him honor. Siri za Mungu ziko kwa wale ambao wanampa heshima. In fact, they that want to give him honor. Hakika wale ambao wanataka kumpa heshima. They that want him exalted. Wanaotaka kuona ameinuliwa. They that want him wanaotaka kumuona uplifted akiwa ameinuliwa juu and the bible says na biblia inasema he reveals to them his covenant his promises huwa anawafunulia agano zake ama siri zake and what it carries his na, his promises and what they carry Ahadi zake na kile zinabeba. He reveals to them huwa anawafunulia what his partnership with him entails. Yaani uhusiano wake naye nao ni nini maana yake? What is in his relationship? Ni nini ambacho kiko katika uhusiano wake? He reveals to them huwa anawafunulia and he doesn't reveal to just everybody. Na huwa hafunuli mtu yeyote tu. Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. Number 1. Ya kwanza. Are you ready for this? Je uko tayari kwa hii? Are you ready for this? Je uko tayari kwa hii? Are you sure? Una uhakika? Number 1. Ya kwanza. Secret number 1. Siri ya kwanza. His friendship urafiki wake grows unapata kukua according to the to the burdens you carry with him kulingana na mizigo ambayo huu unabeba pamoja naye if he can entrust you with his burdens kama anaweza kuaminia mizigo yake it will energize your friendship 
with him. Itazidisha urafiki wako naye. That's a secret. Many people don't know. Hiyo ni siri watu wengi hawafahamu. And because many people don't know that, na kwa sababu watu wengi hawafahamu hivyo, they don't want to carry the burdens of the Lord. Hawataki kubeba mizigo ya Bwana. I will say that again. Itarudia hivyo tena. If you look at somebody like Abraham, ukitazama mtu kama Ibrahim, in Genesis 18, katika mwanzo 18, God comes and says, Mungu anakuja na kusema, through the angels that came into the house of Abraham, kupitia malaika waliokuja nyumbani mwake Ibrahim, and one of them was Jesus. Na mmoja wao alikuwa Yesu. There's something I'm going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah there. Kuna jambo naenda kutenda kule Sodoma na Gomora. Surely. Hakika. Can I afford to hide that to Abraham, my friend? Nawezaje kumficha Ibrahim rafiki yangu? There's something heavy in my heart. Kuna kitu cha uzani mkubwa moyoni mwangu. And I have a friend by name Abraham. Na nina rafiki kwa jina Ibrahim. I can't keep this from him. Siwezi kumficha hili. Hello? 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 I have something heavy in my heart. Nina kitu kizito moyoni mwangu. I don't think I can hide this to my friend Abraham. Nasidhani kwamba naweza kuficha rafiki yangu Ibrahimu jambo hili. Why is God going not to listen to this? Not hide it from Abraham. Kwa nini Mungu hatamficha Ibrahimu jambo hili? Because he is his friend. Kwa sababu ni rafiki yake. How are Bi- we defining this friendship? Je, tuna tafsiri ufrafiki huu kwa namna gani? Abraham, Ibrahimu feels what God feels. Anahisi yale Mungu anayohisi. Nehemiah. Nehemia. Bible says Biblia inasema follow this fuata hii follow this carefully fuata hii kwa makini he is working for the king anamfanyia kazi mfalme he comes to learn of what is and happening in Jerusalem kisha anakuja kufahamu yanayofanyika kule Yerusalemu the walls are broken down ah uh, kuta zimeboboka zime bomoka And the Bible says, na Biblia inasema, he takes up that burden. Anachukua ule mzigo. He goes to Jerusalem. Anaenda kule Yerusalemu. And God is going to use him mightily to restore the walls of Je- Je- Jerusalem. Na Mungu anaenda kumtumia kwa njia kuu kujenga tena kuta za Yerusalemu. Now, look at me carefully. Sasa nitazame kwa makini. He talk, God talk to Isaiah. Mungu alizungumza na Isaia and he tells him na anamwambia I have a friend by name Hez- uh, um, I mean I have a friend by name Hezekiah Nina rafiki aitwaye Hezekiah I want you to go and talk to him Nataka uende uzungumze naye and tell him na umwambie his days are over Siku zake zimeisha Out of that friendship kutoka kwa urafiki I want you to hear this. Ninataka usikie hivi. This is very important. Hii ni muhimu sana. Hezekiah turns to the wall. Hezekiah akaugeukia ukuta. And he tells God. Na anamwambia Mungu, God remember. Mungu kumbuka. The way I carried your burden. Jinsi nilivyobeba mizigo yako. Just remember. Kumbuka tu. Remember. Kumbuka. Before Isaiah goes far he is told go back. Kabla Isaia aende mbali anaamrishwa arudi nyuma. Go tell Hezekiah. Enda mwambie Hezekiah, I've heard his prayers. Nimesikia maombi yake. And I've given him 15 extra years. Na nimemwongeza miaka 15 zaidi. I want you to look at me. Nataka unitazame. If you love what God loves, kama unapenda yale Mungu anapenda. If you want to get, if you get involved in what God is involved in, 
kama utapata kuhusika katika yale mambo Mungu anahusika nayo you will be his friend utafanyika kuwa rafiki yake and you, there are things he will continually reveal to you na kuna mambo ataendelea kukufunulia and not everybody else na sio kila mtu that's why the bible says ndio maana biblia inasema blessed are the feet of they that bring the good news imebarikiwa miguu ya wale wapelekao habari njema and i want you to tell your neighbor na nataka uambie jirani yako not every feet is blessed sio kila miguu ambayo imebarikiwa you love what god loves unapenda yale mungu anapenda you get involved in what god is involved in ni uhusike katika yale mambo ambayo Mungu anahusika ndani yake. You will be his friend. Utafanyika kuwa rafiki yake. And God will continually reveal to you promise after promise. Na Mungu ataendelea kukufunulia ahadi baada ya ahadi. And God will continue to slice for you a part of his covenant after another part. Na Mungu ataendelea kukukatia sehemu ya agano lake baada ya sehemu. When I, when I when we were in western tulipokuwa maeneo ya magharibi then we came to narok kisha tukaja narok god gave me wonderful revelations mungu alinipa ufunuo wa ajabu he spoke to me in ways i can't tell you alinena nami kwa njia ambazo siwezi kukuelezea because i was involved in what he loves kwa sababu nilihusika katika yale mambo anapenda i'll say that again nitarudi hivyo tena Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. I was involved. Nilipata kuhusika in what he loves. Katika yale mambo anapenda. Let me tell you something. Wacheni niwaambie jambo. And I, I'm going to say this very kindly. Na nitasema hili kwa ukarimu mwingi. Next to the devil. Uh, uh, wakaribu sana na shetani. Your greatest enemy is called self. Yaani Uh, adui yako mkubwa zaidi anaitwa ubinafsi self ubinafsi i'm just giving you a secret nakupatia tu siri self ubinafsi self ubinafsi i me mine mimi mwenyewe na viangu I say again. Tarudia tena. I mimi me mimi mwenyewe and mine na viangu. When you come to the church, unapokuja kwenye kanisa, it's I ni mimi, it's me ni mimi mwenyewe and mine na vitu vyangu. Because kwa sababu you, when you come here, unapokuja hapa, you meet a God, unakutana na Mungu who is thinking ambaye anatoa harufu he is thinking he anafikiri, is thinking. anafikiria ambaye anafikiria he is thinking ambaye anafikiria about that one that one my neighbor there the one in mission there so ni kama mnapitana Anafikiria kuhusu yule pale mwingine kule mwingine kwenye misheni kule jirani kule sasa mnakaa it's like you are criss crossing each other By the way that's why Moravian helps you to come out of me Ndio maana Moravian prayer chain Ndio maana maombi ya Moravian inakusaidia utoke kwangu hivyo I'll say that again Ntarudi hivyo tena Are you hearing what I'm saying Jeuna skin ninavyosema Next to the devil Wakaribu sana na shetani you are next enemy adui yako kutoka kwa shetani is called self ni ubinafsi in fact satan uses self hakika shetani hutumia ubinafsi to make sure that you are far from what god loves kwa, and to be far from getting involved in what god is involved in kuhakikisha kwamba uko mbali sana na yale Mungu anapenda na kuhakikisha pia hauhusiki katika yale mambo ambayo Mungu anahusika nayo I'm not teaching you I'm just giving you a word of counsel Si wafunzi nawapatia tu neno la ushauri And I know this will come as a word of wisdom 
for somebody here. Na najua hili litakuwa ni neno la hekima na busara kwa mtu aliye hapa. The bigger the burden you can carry. Jinsi unavyoweza kubeba mzigo mkubwa. The greater your friendship with God. Ndivyo urafiki wako na Mungu utakavyokuwa mkubwa. Please. Tafadhali. For a beginning. Kwa, kwa utangulizi. Are we talking? Je, tunazungumza? I, I said I'm not preaching. I'm Nili... just giving you a word of counsel. Ask your neighbor. Nilisema sifunzi na wapa neno la ushauri muulize jirani. Have you really prayed for anybody today? Je, umemwombea mtu leo? Kuomba. Pray. Kuomba. Pray. Just to pray for somebody. Kumuombea tu mtu. Greet somebody for me on the other side and ask them, have you been a blessing? to anybody this way Salimia mtu aliye upande huu mwingine kwa niaba yangu na umuulize je umefanyika kuwa baraka juu ya mtu wiki hii Tuonge 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 Let's talk now Just in a very simple way Yaani kwa namna rahisi sana Now listen to this Sasa sikiliza Friendship with God invites unusual blessings yani urafiki na Mungu huwa unaalika baraka zisizo kuwa za kawaida the bible talks of joseph biblia inazungumza kuhusu yusufu among the 12 sons of jacob kati ya wana 12 wawili wa yakobo and says jacob na kusema yakobo He's like a branch that goes beyond the wall. Ni kama tawi linalopita kuta. When he gets blessed, anapopata kubarikiwa, that blessing will reach others on the other side. Hizo baraka even strangers just passing by the road. Hizo baraka zitafikia watu wengine ngambo ile nyingine hata wageni wanaopita njiani. People with burdens have their blessings spill over to other people. Watu walio na mizigo hupata baraka ambazo zinamiminikia watu wengine. That's why ndio maana we have prayer cave tv. Tuko na prayer cave tv. We want our blessings to spill over. Tunataka baraka zetu zimiminikie wengine huko. That's why we talk about your partnership. Ndio maana tunazungumza kuhusu ufadhili wako. So that you can be a branch that goes beyond the wall. Ili ufanyike kuwa tawi ambalo linaenda linapita ukuta. And so that you can be involved in what God is involved in. Na ili upate kuhusika katika yale Mungu anahusika nayo because that one invites and prayed for blessings. Yaani hiyo huleta baraka ambazo hazina uh, you, you don't need to pray for them. Hauhitaji kuziombea. You don't need to pray for them. They just come. Baraka ambazo huombei zinakuja tu. The ones you hear and these blessings will come and overtake you. Hapo ndio unasikia kwamba hizi baraka zitakuja zikupite. Don't don't please don't stay without burden. Tafadhali usikae bila kuwa na mzigo. I still remember in Garissa we would spend weeks praying and fasting that God would give us his burdens nakumbuka tukiwa maeneo ya garisa tungetumia majuma kuomba kwamba mungu atatupa mizigo when we can, when somebody came and taught us wakati mtu alikuja akatufunza many years ago over 45 years ago miaka mingi imepita zaidi ya miaka 45 imepita somebody came to our church i was a young man mtu akaja kanisani askofu wakati yule alikuwa kijana mdogo listen to this and taught us skiliza na akatufunza a believer without a burden mkristo bila kuwa na mzigo is going nowhere with god haendi popote na mungu because god is in the business kwa sababu mungu ako katika shughuli of helping people za kusaidia watu 
That's why he says, come unto you, me, all you who are heavily laden. Ndiyo maana anasema njooni kwangu enyi nyote mliye beba mizigo mizito. Jesus came because the father had a burden. Yesu alikuja kwa sababu baba alikuwa na mzigo. It is defined in John 3:16 for God so much so much. He loved the world. He carried you in his heart so much. Ufafanuzi wake uko katika Yohana 3:16 kwamba kwa kuwa Mungu aliupenda ulimwengu sana hata akamtoa mwanae wa pekee. And this man who came and taught us I will never forget. Na huyu mtu aliyekuja akatufunza sitawahi sahau kamwe. Never. Hata kamwe. I'm talking about over 45 years, uh, years ago. Nazungumza kuhusu zaidi ya miaka 45 iliyopita. This is what he told us. Hivi ndivyo alivyotuambia. If you really want to God know kama hakika unataka kujua how far you are going with God. Unaenda na Mungu mbali gani? Just look at the kind of burdens he is putting in your heart. Tazama tu aina ya mizigo ambayo anaweka moyoni mwako. I will never forget that. Sitawaisahau hivyo. The secrets of the Lord. Siri zake bwana. That's why the enemy of our soul wants us selfish. Ndio maana adui ya nafsi zetu anataka tuwe watu ambao wana ubinafsi so that we don't go far with God. Ili tusiende mbali na Mungu. I want you to look at me. Nataka unitazame. Even in a family. Hata katika familia. Whether it's first born or third born or 15th born or the last born iwe ni mzaliwa wa kwanza mzaliwa wa tatu wa 15 wa ukitinda mimba any parent mzazi yote will look upon that guy who can carry burdens of the family atatazamia huyo mtu mmoja tu anayeweza beba mizigo ya familia doesn't hit the others Aiguzi wengine he doesn't hit the others hapigani na wenzake he doesn't she doesn't hit the others yeye hapigi wenzake but there is a spot lakini kuna kitu there is a spot kuna spot in his heart moyoni mwake kuna sehemu moyoni mwake because this individual kwa sababu huyu mtu sometimes is the 15th born wakati mwingine ni mzaliwa wa 15 i know you are in a generation whereby one or two is enough najua tuko katika kizazi ambapo mtoto mmoja au wawili wametosha in those days siku zile hallelujah hallelujah the secret of the lord siri zake bwana are with they that want him honored ni za wale wanaotaka kuona akiheshimika they carry what he carries in his heart wanabeba kile ambacho anabeba moyoni mwake i'm giving you a secret nakupatia siri never i mean pray that god whether it is burden is of prayer whether it is of giving something to someone whether it is giving into the house of god whether it's going to visit somebody just a visit to encourage yani omba mungu iwe ni kutoa kwa sababu ya jambo fulani ama kumbariki mtu na jambo lolote au ni kwenda kumtembelea mtu kwa sababu yoyote ile do you remember jesus saying je unakumbuka yesu akisema some will come baadhi yao watakuja and they would uh, and i'll tell them na nitawaambia i was hungry you gave me food nilikuwa na njaa na namka i did not have clothes sikuwa na mavazi you did, you gave me clothes mkanipa mavazi hello hello i was tired nilikuwa na uchovu you help me rest mkanisaidia kupata pumziko and some people will ask when na wengine watauliza lini sikuwa ikuona mahali and jesus will tell them na yesu atawaambia when you did it to one of those ones mlipotendea mmoja wa wale that belong to me ambaye ni wangu i had their burden nilikuwa na mzigo wao it is you that i touched ni nyinyi ndio niliguza and you obeyed na mkaeti
help a preacher there. Sidiyo mhubiri hapo. That's the voice of a preacher. Hiyo ni sauti ya mhubiri. Hello? Hello. Are we together? Je tuko pamoja? Are we together? Je tuko pamoja? When you see yourself Unapojiona wewe mwenyewe oh you think uh, you are thinking is about you and you and you and you unachofikiria ni kujihusu wewe peke yako you are uko pahara mbaya know that you are on the wrong path i was taught that over 45 years ago nilifunzwa hayo zaidi ya miaka 45 iliyopita i have never forgotten sijawahi sahau If I stay without feeling that God is putting something there for somebody. Kama nikikaa Abade. kama nimekaa bila kusikia Mungu ameweka mzigo hapo kwa sababu ya mtu or a city ama mji or a church ama kanisa and I do there is something that is not right. Ndio kuna jambo ambalo haliendi sawa. Secret number two. Siri ya pili. Tuonge. let's talk Tuonge. let's talk the secret of the lord is with they that fear him siri zake bwana ziko na wale wanao mcha they that reverence him ambao wana mcha mungu they that really want him exalted ambao wanataka hakika kuona ametukuka they that want him sanctified in their lives ambao wanataka utakaso wake ndani ya maisha yao and add this naongeza hii and they never get familiar with god na huwa hawapati mazoea na mungu anywhere i was i was in western Mali popote nilikuwa nilikuwa magharibi even in Junja hata pia maeneo ya Juja in Narok maeneo ya Narok I told the people niliambia watu before I go to open the bible kabla sijaingia kufungua biblia let me give you a word of counsel wacha niukupe neno la ushauri when the enemy wants to rob you in broad daylight wakati shetani anataka kukuibia mchana peupe tell your neighbor broad daylight ambia jirani yako mchana peupe when the enemy wants to rob you wakati adui anataka kukuibia in broad daylight mchana peupe all that he needs to throw at you anachotaka tu kukurushia is the spirit of familiarity ni roho ya mazoea broad daylight mchana peupe you get used to the word unapata kuzoea neno you get used to god unamzoea mungu you got you get used to his servants unapata kuzoea watumishi wake you get used to a service unapata kuzoea ibada service ibada where do you meet that unapata hiyo wapi mark 6 Marko sura ya sita. I have given you this verse. Nimekupatia hili andiko. I have given you this scripture. Nimekupatia haya maandiko. I am going to give you again. Nitakupatia tena. When you get familiar with the God. Unapomzoea Mungu. When you get familiar with the word of God. Unapolizoea neno la Mungu. His servants. Watumishi wake. Look at me very carefully. Nitazame kwa umakini. It limits the power of god the grace of god that will work in your life huwa inapata kuzuia kiwango cha neema ya mungu ambayo itafanya kazi maishani mwako i'm giving you a secret nakupatia siri that's what happened in jesus hometown hiyo ndio iliyofanyika katika mji yesu alipozaliwa the bible says biblia inasema and jesus would not do many miracles there na Yesu hakuweza kufanya miujiza mingi pale. Yona hiyo da few sick people. Alipata kuponya tu watu kadhaa waliokuwa wagonjwa. Went to Capernaum. Akaenda Capernaum. Healed everybody. Akaponya kila mtu. Yeah, it's there on your screen. Iko hapo kwenye He could not do many miracles there. Hangeweza kufanya miujiza mingi pale except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them 
Isipokuwa kuwekelea mikono yake watu kadhaa waliokuwa wanaugua na kuwaponya. No. Begin from verse 1. Thank you media team. Anzia sura ya uh, mstari um, wa kwanza. Asanteni media. Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and the many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked. What, what's this wisdom that has been given to him that he even does miracles? Go on. Isn't this the carpenter? The, the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon and his sisters here with us? And they were offended of him. That means, listen to this. Listen to this. When the spirit of familiarity invades you. Listen to this. You feel irritated. You feel irritated. When God says he is going to do something for you. You see what, what he is doing. But instead of you grabbing hold of it. It's like you are pushing it away. They asked. I, I, I want you to think of this. They are calling Jesus the son of the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth, son of Mary. Yani wanamuita Yesu, mwana wa mungu wa ishie hai, mumbaji wa dunia na ulimwengu mzima, wanamuita mwana wa Mariamu. And they heard what he did in Tyre. Na walisikia alichofanya kule Tyre. They heard what he did on the other side of Tiberias. Walisikia kile alifanya kule ngambo ya Tiberias. But in his home town. Lakini mjini kwao. They are saying, Wanasema, we have one of the tables that he and Joseph made. Tuko na moja ya meza ambayo alitengeneza pamoja na Yusufu. The spirit of familiarity blinds you to the glory of God. Yani roho you ya cannot see the glory of God. Roho ya mazoea huwa inakupofusha usione utukufu wa Mungu. The secrets of the Lord. Siri zake bwana are with they that reverence him. Ziko na wale wa mtukuzae and they that never get familiar with him. Na wale ambao kamwe hawapati mazoea naye. Let me tell you how you can tell whether that spirit is around you. Wacha nikonyeshe sasa jinsi ya kuweza kutambanua kama hiyo roho iko karibu nawe. The spirit of familiarity kills expectation. Roho ya mazoea huwa inaua matarajio. You don't expect much. So you don't come hungry. Tonight I wanna be together. Tonight I wanna be together. I can see some people's appetite is going very high now. Now sasa njaya watu wengine inaenda juu sana sasa. Now follow this. Sasa fuata hii. God will only release according to your expectation. Mungu kila mara ataachilia sabamba kulingana na matarajio yako. We meet that in the Bible. Tunapata hiyo kwenye Biblia. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be he filled. Uh, wa, 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 wa wale wa njaa na kiu 
haki na utakatifu manake watapata kujazwa Matthew 5 Mathayo 5 Listen to this Sikiliza hii God will release on the level of your hunger Mungu ataachilia katika kiwango cha njaa yako Let me say that again Wacha nirudi hivyo tena I'm saying this whether you are in this house Nasema hivi aidha uwe katika nyumba hii whether you are in your house ama uko katika nyumba yako any time you are to go to the presence of God wakati wowote unapoenda katika uwepo wa Mungu God never wastes his resources he will release on the level of your hunger Mungu kamwe huwa haharibu rasilimali zake ataachilia tu kulingana na njaa na kiu chako That's why one time ndio maana wakati mmoja he said alisema don't he told his disciples don't throw your pearls before swine aliambia wanafunzi wake msitupe vito vyenu mbele zao ngurue because kwa sababu they will make them swim in mud watazichanganya na matope is anybody hearing me je kuna mtu ananisikia now sasa write this in capital letter this wisdom andika hii busara na hekima kwa herufi kubwa we call this distilled wisdom hii tunaita hekima na busara ya kiwango cha juu the level you value it to that level god will release it kwa kiwango ambacho unaidhamini kwa hicho kiwango ndicho Mungu atakachoachilia. Is this your wisdom? He ni hekma na busara ya kiwango cha juu. I have every time I go before God, kila mara ninapoenda mbele zake Mungu, and I'm studying the scriptures, na ninasoma maandiko I tell God wanaambia Mungu there is hidden wealth in these scriptures kuna uh, kuna utajiri mwingi umefichwa kwenye haya maandiko I know I have read them many times najua nimeyasoma mara nyingi but I am praying that you speak to me lakini naomba uninenee from this kutoka kwa haya just speak to me ninenee tu speak to me ninenee because I know there is something here kwa sababu najua kuna kitu hapa That's why I'm amazed. Ndio maana huwa nashangaa. Even before you are amazed. Hata kabla upate kushangaa. And others are amazed. Na wengineo wapate kushangaa by what I get from very familiar scriptures. Kwa yale ambayo upata kutoka kwa maandiko ambayo tunayafahamu sana. Because I value. Kwa sababu ninadhamini. I value the Holy Ghost as a teacher. Nadhamini Roho Mtakatifu kama mwalimu. I know he has more. Najua ako na mengi zaidi. I don't just want to read it religiously. Sitaki kusoma tu kidini, but I want to hear his voice. Lakini nataka nisikie sauti yake. Now, look at me carefully. Sasa nitazame kwa umakini. Are you ready? Je, uko tayari? Are you ready? Uko tayari? Your value determines your hunger dhamana yako itakuwa inaonyesha kiwango cha njaa yako if you value it kama unaidhamini you will be very hungry for it utakuwa na njaa kubwa kwa sababu yake if you are hungry of his presence kama una njaa ya uwepo wake is because you value his presence ni kwa sababu unadhamini uwepo wake That's how it goes. Hivyo ndivyo ilivyo. Are we together? Je, tuko pamoja? Are we together? Tuko pamoja. In, in, in the places we were, uh, katika sehemu ambazo tulikuwa, they are not different. Haziko tofauti. It's not different from here. Si tofauti na hapa. It's not different. Si tofauti. Except one thing. Isipokuwa jambo moja tu. They are very hungry. Wana njaa kubwa. My God, they are hungry. Mungu wangu wale watu wana njaa. They are hungry. Wana njaa. In Narok, kule Narok, we have somebody some people fly all the way from South Africa for that meeting. Tuna watu ambao walichukua ndege wakaja kwa sababu ya huo mkutano. Quite a good number of people came all the way from Narok. Uh, watu wengi walikuja kutoka Narok. There are people who came. 
uh, several pastors came from Nairobi here. Wachungaji kadha walikuja kutoka Nairobi hapa. They left their churches. Waliacha makanisa yao. To come there. Waje kule. Many pastors in the city. Wachungaji wengi katika mji. I mean like now yani kama sasa in that church katika ilo kanisa they hold a pastors breakfast once a year. Huwa wanaandaa chakula cha asubuhi kwa ajili ya wachungaji mara moja kwa mwaka. They invite all the bishops, they invite all the reverends, the pastors, they bring them there. Na wanaalika maaskofu wote, makasisi wote na wachungaji wote wanawaleta pale. That was on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Hiyo ilikuwa ni siku ya Jumanne. Tuesday, Jumanne. The hall was packed. Yaani ukumbi ulikuwa umejaa. Packed. Ulikuwa umejaa. In that county, katika hiyo county, I want to show you about hunger. Nataka nikuonyeshe kuhusu njaa. They have once a year, kila mara moja kwa mwaka, leaders breakfast wako na chakula cha asubuhi cha viongozi to pray for their county waombe county yao the governor the governor senators senator wapo the mps uh, wabunge government employees wajiriwa wa kazi wa serikali people in various organizations watu ambao wanafanya kazi sehemu zingine tofauti they come there wanakuja pale to pray for their county waombe county yao and we are not talking about religious prayers na tuzungumzi kuhusu maombi ya kidini we are talking about pray tunazungumza kuhusu kuomba they had that meeting on monday walikuwa na huo mkutano jumatatu i was speaking to them on monday askofu walikuwa nawanenea jumatatu they were all there wote walikuwa hapo ja hanga ja hanga and god released it to their level na Mungu akaachilia katika kiwango chao. John 9. Yohana sura ya 9. Let's go to a very wonderful scripture. Tuone andiko ambalo ni la ajabu hapa. I started on it this morning. Ah nilisoma asubuhi ya leo. And thank you so much visitors. Na asanteni sana wageni. We love you. Tunawapenda. We love you. We love you. We love you. Tunawapenda, tunawapenda, tunawapenda. Let's look at John 9. Tutazame Yohana sura ya 9. But before we do that, lakini kabla tufanye hivyo, can you preach to your neighbor or remind them of two of God's secrets? Hubiria jirani yako au mkumbushe kuhusu siri mbili zake Mungu. Na kama hakuongeleshi, and if they are not talking back, piga yeye kofi aamke. Kama hakuongeleshi piga yeye kofi na mwambie I love you I want you to get this. Oh, no I'm joking. Kundadhi nafanya tu mzaa. How many people love God here? Watu wangapi hapa wanapenda Mungu? Ona to go to the Bible. Nataka tuingie katika Biblia. Media people give us John 9. Media tafadhali tupatie kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 9. It's going to help us very well. Itatusaidia sana. The Bible says as he went by he saw a man blind from birth. Go on now. Ndelea. His disciples asked him rabbi who seen this man? or his parents that he was born blind neither this man nor his parents sinned said jesus but this happened that the work of god might be displayed in his life as long as it is day we must work of him we must do the work of him who sent me night is coming when no no one can walk the bible says While I'm in the world I'm the light of the world. Verse 6 Having said this he spit on the ground and made some mud with his saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go he told him 
wash in the pool of Siloam, this word means sent. So the man went and washed and came, came home seeing. Before we go any further, go to verse 1. Kabla tuende mbali, turudi mstari wa kwanza. The Bible says, Biblia nasema, as he went along, hata alipokuwa kipita, when they wrote the Bible, walipoandika Biblia, at first they did not have chapters and verses. Kwanza kabisa hawakuwa na aya na sura. So this story comes from chapter 8. Kwa hivyo hadithi hii inatoka kutoka sura ya 8. Whereby Jesus was in the feast of the tabernacles. Ambapo Yesu alikuwa katika sherehe ya hekalu. This is when the Israelites make booth all over. Hapa ndipo mahali wa Israeli uweka hema kila mahali. And they light torches. Na wanaakisha uh, torch zao. During the night. Usiku. And Jesus. Na Yesu. Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. Comes and says. Anakuja na kusema. You, you lit a lot of touch, torches. Muli washa tochi nyingi, ta nyingi. I am the light of the world. Mimi ndiye mwanga wa ulimwengu. I'll come to that in a bit. Nitakuja hiyo baadaye. But I want verse 1. Lakini nataka mstari wa kwanza. As Jesus went along. Yesu alipokuwa anapita. Please underline these words. Tafadhali weka mstari chini ya maneno. So. Aliona. That's very rich. Hiyo ina utajiri mkubwa. Talk about wealth. Zungumza kuhusu utajiri. Jesus so. Yesu akaona Hebrews 4:13 wa Hebrania 4:13 the bible says that he sees everything Biblia inasema kwamba yeye huona kila kitu everything kila kitu he sees everything yeye huona kila kitu everything is naked before him kila kitu kiko wazi mbele zake nothing zakira. in all creation is hidden from god's sight everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him with whom we must give account simple simple everything is naked before god the one we are dealing with yani kila kitu kiko wazi mbele zake mungu ambaye tuko naye but i want you to look at those words in john 9 lakini nataka utazame hayo maandiko ambayo yako katika kitabu cha yohana 9 those two words he saw hayo maneno mawili akaona and what does that mean? Na hiyo inamaanisha nini? He saw with the eye of concern. Aliona kwa jicho ambalo linakushughulika. I said this in the first service I'll say again. Nilisema hii katika ibada ya awali na nitarudia tena. It means he saw with the eye of concern. Aliona kwa jicho ambalo linakushughulika. When you come to Hebrews 4:13, ukija wa Hebrania 4:13, he sees everything. Yeye huona kila kitu. But this one, lakini hii moja, he saw with the eye of compassion. Alitazama na akaona kwa jicho la huruma. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, when he saw, alipoona, he had a burden for this man. Alipata mzigo kwa ajili ya mtu huyu. Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. When you see with the eye of compassion, unapotazama kwa jicho la huruma, you spring into action. Sasa utaingia katika kutenda. That's how you know Even that you have seen with the eye of compassion. Hivyo ndivyo utakavyojua kwamba umeona kwa jicho lenye huruma. Many times we just see with these natural eyes. Mara nyingi huwa tunaona kwa haya macho yetu ya asiri and we just pass by. Na tunapita tu. If you can remember the story of this guy that had fallen in the hands of robbers, the Levite came, when the Pharisees came, I mean they saw but with this these eyes they passed by. Kama unaweza kumbuka hii hadithi ya huyu mtu ambaye alianguka mikononi mwa watu ambao ni wezi wakampiga akaanguka barabarani watu walipita pale hawakumuona waliona kwa macho But with Jesus he sees with the eye of compassion. Lakini Yesu yeye huona kwa jicho la huruma. Go with me to Matthew 8 14 15. Ingia nami kwenye kitabu cha Mathayo 8:14 hadi 15. Please. Tafadhali. Go with me there. 
enda nami pale Matthew 8 Madayo sura ya 8 verse 14 and 15 Mstari wa 14 na wa 15 When Jesus came into Peter's house he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in the bed with a fever underline what did he do he saw tell your neighbor he saw ambia jirani yako aliona this woman was helpless huyu mama alikuwa amezidiwa she was down with the fever alikuwa amewezwa na homa verse 15 mstari wa 15 he touched her hand and the fever left and she got up and it began to wait on them follow this fota hii because it was an eye of concern kwa sababu nilikuwa ni jicho la huruma he sprang into action akaingia kwenye kitendo he touched her akamguza the bible says she rose up biblia inasema akainuka because she, she was healed kwa sababu alipata kuponywa and started to serve them na akaanza kuwahudumia and i come to tell someone na nimekuja kuambia mtu he sees you anakuona when you are low in finances wakati uko chini kifedha and there is nothing you can do na uwezi lolote he sees you huwa anakuona when you are down with sickness wakati uko chini na maradhi you cannot do much hauwezi fanya mengi he sees you huwa anakuona when you are down with the depression wakati uko chini na msongo wa mawazo he sees you huwa anakuona when you are scandalized wakati umekelewa njama he sees you huwa anakuona when you are rejected wakati umekataliwa he sees you huwa anaku kuona may i go one one step further na nipige hatua zaidi say, he is seeing you na niseme anakuona with an eye of compassion that makes him have a burden for you kwa jicho la huruma ambalo mfanya awe na mzigo kwa sababu yako go with me to genesis 16 enda nami kwenye kitabu cha mwanzo 16 i think we will begin from verse 13 nadhani tutaanza mstari wa 13 hega 13 yes keep it there keep it there chendele kwa hapo Hega is running away from the house of Abraham Hega anatoroka kutoka kwa nyumba ya Ibrahimu she's running away anatoroka she has been mistreated ame ame teswa mistreated yani amepata kuteseka the word is mistreated neno ni kwamba amepata kuteswa i'll say again mistreated anasema tena amepata kuteswa used and mistreated yani ametumiwa kisha akateswa misused and mistreated ametumiwa vibaya na akapata kuteswa she is running away sasa anatoroka in the desert katika jangwa she has a baby ana mtoto the baby is just about to die mtoto karibu afe and the bible says na biblia inasema an angel of the lord appeared to her malaika wa mungu akamtokea and told her na akamwambia the baby will not die mtoto hatakufa the baby will become a nation mtoto atafanyika taifa and the bible says na biblia inasema haga turned around Haga akageuka and said na akasema surely hakika i have seen the god who sees me nimemuona mungu anionaye can i help you je nikusaidie i'll prophesy natabiri right now sasa hivi you will see the god who sees you utamuona mungu akuonaye i'll prophesy again natabiri tena 
right now. Sasa hivi. What you are carrying will not die. Kile unabeba hakitakufa. What you are carrying will become generational. Unachobeba kitakuwa cha vizazi. The gifting you have will not die. Karama ulizonazo hazitakufa. The grace you have will not go to waste. Neema unayobeba itapotea. The anointing you have will not go down upako ulionao hautaenda chini the ministry you carry is not going to die huduma unayobeba haitakufa the family you have is not going to die hiyo familia ulionao haitakufa i declare by the word of god natangaza kwa neno la mungu that business will not die hiyo biashara haitakufa i declare today natangaza leo in the name of the father kwa jina la baba and of the son na la mwana and of the holy ghost the church will not die kanisa litakufa Your gift will not die. Karama yako itakufa. Your children will not die. Wanao hawatakufa. Can I help you? Nikusaidie. I'm looking at some mama here. Natazama mama hapa. I'm saying by the word of God. Nasema kwa neno la Mungu. Then their father may have left. Baba yao anaweza kuwa aliondoka. I declare by the word of God. Lakini natangaza kwa neno la Mungu. Those children will not become chokoraa. Hao watoto watafanyika kuwa chokoraa. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. They will not be chokoraa. Hao watakuwa chokoraa. They will be a generation watakuwa kizazi that will bring up another generation kitakacholeta kizazi kingine na generation na vizazi vingine why kwa nini you will see a god utamuona mungu akuonae in jesus name kwa jina la yesu he saw aliona a man born blind mtu aliyezaliwa akiwa kipofu What did he do? Alifanya nini? Sprang into action. Akaingia kwenye kitendo. Because he saw with an eye of compassion. Kwa sababu aliona kwa jicho la huruma. He that gave him a burden for this man. Ali aliyempa mzigo juu ya mtu huyu. John chapter 5. Yohana sura ya 5. Follow this. Fuata hii. Listen to this. Sikiliza hii. Read go to, right, let's begin verse 1. mstari wa kwanza. I'm interested in verse 5. Nataka ku nazingatia mstari wa 5 lakini tuanze wa kwanza. Sometime later Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there in there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great multitude of disabled people used to lie the blind the lame and the paralyzed was for one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years Are you ready? Je uko tayari? Are you ready? Je uko tayari? Are you ready? Je uko tayari? How many people have been waiting for a promise to be fulfilled for many years here. Watu wangapi hapa wamekuwa kisubiri ahadi ije kutimia kwa miaka mingi hapa? People here have been expecting that God will do something for you for many years. Wangapi hapa wamekuwa kitarajia Mungu atakutendea jambo kwa miaka mingi? That's what that, that we are talking about that man. Hiyo ndio tunazungumzia kuhusu huyo mtu. Now I want you to see verse 5. Sasa nataka uone mstari wa 5. The Bible comes and says in verse 5. Mstari wa 5 Biblia inasema One who had been there one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years verse 6 Mstari wa 6 When Jesus saw him underline those words when he saw him piga mstari wa maneno maneno mawili saw him alimuona lying there akiwa amelala pale and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time na akafahamu amekuwa katika hali hii kwa muda mrefu. He passed by. Akapitia pale. Is that your Bible? Je, hiyo ni Biblia yako? Hello? Naam. Hello? Naam. He ignored him. Oh. Is that your Bible? Je, Biblia yako inasema alimpunguza? Uh, hello? Hello? He greeted him and left. Alimpungia mkono akaondoka. Is that your Bible? Je, hiyo ni Biblia yako? The Bible says. Biblia inasema, when he saw him, alipomuona, 
and learned that this thing had been there for a long time na kajua hili jambo limekuepo kwa muda mrefu and that he had been waiting na amekuwa kisubiri and not just waiting na sio kusubiri he tu. had been doing his best amekuwa kijaribu awezavyo don't think god does not see your effort usidhani mungu hauni juhudi zako don't see, think he doesn't see your uh, you know your labors usidhani mungu haoni kazi zako don't think he doesn't hear your prayers usidhani mungu hasikii maombi yako the bible says biblia inasema jesus saw that man there yesu aliona huyo mtu pale and learned that he had been lying there na akajua amekuwa amelala pale for a long time kwa muda mrefu i don't know how long is your long time sijui ni urefu kiasi gani ndio muda wako mrefu But listen to this. Lakini sikiliza hii. There is a long time kuna muda mrefu that God is dealing with now. Ambao Mungu anashughulikia sasa. Ah, you didn't hear what I'm saying. Ukusikia ninavyosema. There is a long time kuna muda mrefu that Jesus ambao Yesu this morning asubuhi ya leo is dealing with anashughulikia because he is carrying a burden. Kwa sababu anabeba mzigo. That long time huo muda mrefu has fallen in his heart. Umeanguka moyoni mwake. As a burden. Kama mzigo. And he is saying. Na anasema. Do you want to get well? Je unataka kuwa salama? so aliona he so aliona that one changed my life hilo neno lilibadilisha maisha yangu and i don't know how many times i've read that story na sijui nimesoma hiyo hadithi mara ngapi but one time when i'm reading it lakini wakati mmoja nilipokuwa nasoma is like my eyes just hit those words ni kama macho yangu yaligonga tu hayo maneno I said that's it. Nikasema hiyo inatosha. Now speak to me. Sasa ni nene. He saw. Aliona that this man had been lying there. Kwamba huyu mtu amekuwa amelala hapo. Come on, listen. Sikiliza. Are you ready? Je uko tayari? God has feelings. Mungu ana hisia. One of the things that transformed my prayer life mojo wapo ya mambo yaliyobadilisha maisha yangu ya maombi is just an understanding that god has feelings ni kuelewa tu kwamba mungu ako na hisia that's why in hebrews 4 ndio maana katika waebrania 4 from verse 14 kuanzia mstari wa 14 god is touched by the feelings of our infirmities mungu huwa anaguzwa na hisia za udhaifu wetu He's touched. Huwa anaguzwa because he has feelings. Kwa sababu ana hisia. The Bible says, Biblia inasema, follow this carefully. Fuata hii kwa umakini. This is so important. Hii ni muhimu sana. Jesus saw. Yesu akaona that this man had been lying there for a long time. Kwamba huyu mtu amelala pale muda mrefu and he sprang into action. Na akaingia kwenye kitendo. He learned. Akajua That this man has not had not been there. Huyu mtu hajakuwa tu hapo. For one or two days. Kwa siku moja au mbili. It was a long time. Ilikuwa muda mrefu. It's like someone who has been expecting and expecting and expecting that husband who is a drunkard to get saved. Ni kama mtu ambaye amekuwa kitarajia na kutarajia na kutarajia huyo mme ambaye ni mlevi. You have been throwing applications here and there Umeko, without getting a job umekuwa ukituma maombi ya ajira hapa na kule bila kupata kazi what i love is that my god is real ninachopenda ni kwamba mungu wangu ni uhakika and he deals with real people na huwa anashughulika na watu halisi you didn't hear what i'm saying au kusikia vile ninavyosema he deals with real people huwa anashughulika na watu wa kweli not heroes sio mashuja not superheroes sio mashuja wa mashuja is anybody here ni kuna mtu ananisikia but with real people lakini na watu people with real issues watu ambao wako na mambo ya kawaida oh, you didn't hear what i'm saying hujasikia mimi nimesema people with real issues watu ambao wako na mambo yanayosumbua watu he looked at that man alimtazama huyo mtu and so he had been lying there for a long time na akaona amelala pale muda mrefu learn that he had you know Learned that they I mean he has been there for ages 
akafahamu kwamba amekuwa pale kwa miongo na miongo it's like he said let's, let's finish this ni kama alisema acha tumalizane na this one can all continue hiyo haiwezi kuendelea can i help you nikusaidie As the God I serve Mungu ni mtumikia yeye I am hearing the God I serve Kama nasikia Mungu na mtumikia I know I'm hearing him Najua namsikia Listen to this very carefully Kiza hiko makini There is a word for someone Kuna neno la mtu The Lord would say Mungu anasema This cannot go on any other day Hai haiwezi kuendelea zaidi tena It can't Haiwezi It can't Haiwezi It cannot go on Haiwezi endelea beyond this Kupita hapa Did you hear what I'm saying? This cannot go on. Beyond this. Kupita hapa. That's why he looked at that man. Ndio maana atazama huyo mtu. And asked him. Na akamuuliza. Do you want to get well? Je, unataka kupona? The man said. Mtu akasema. I don't have anybody. Sina mtu yeyote. To put me there. Wakunirusha pale. It's like Jesus said. Ni kama Yesu alisema. That's why I'm here. Ndio maana niko hapa. That's why I'm here. Ndio maana niko hapa. I don't have the strength. Sina nguvu to jump into the pool. Za kuruka kwenye birika. When it is stirred up. Wakati imetikiswa. Because there are get crashers. Maana yake kuna watu wa kuingilia. There are people. Kuna watu who are always going ahead of me. Ambao huingia mbele yangu. Can I help you? Je, nikusaidie? I don't know and I don't care how many people have jumped before you. Sijui na sijali ni watu wangapi wameruka mbele zako. I declare by the word of God. Natangaza kwa neno la Mungu. I don't know. Sijui how many people. Ni watu wangapi When you try to jump in, they in, hold you back. I don't know. How many demons? Have been there. Every time. You try to jump in. They keep you back. I declare. Natangaza. Today. Leo. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Today. Leo. It ends up today. It ends up today. Up to death. And hear me. Nanisikie. The others can jump in. Wengine wanaweza ruka ndani. You yourself. Lakini wewe mwenyewe utainuka and get going. Na uende. I'm prophesying a shortcut. Natabiria mtu njia mkato. I'm prophesying a shortcut. Natabiria mtu njia mkato. For someone who has been waiting for a long time. Kwa mtu aliyesubiri muda mrefu. I'm declaring a shortcut. Natangaza njia mkato. I'm declaring a shortcut. Natangaza njia mkato. I'm declaring a shortcut. Natangaza njia mkato. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. I declare a shortcut. Natangaza njia mkato. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. When he saw alipoona a man lying there mtu amelala pale and learned that he had been there for a long time na kajua amekuwa pale muda mrefu he said alisema they said today inaisha leo today leo i don't know who's word this one is sijui hili ni neno la nani I, I, I don't know whose word this one is. Sijui hili ni neno la nani. But I declare by the word of God. Kinatangaza kwa neno la Mungu. You are long time. Muda wako mrefu. Of wait. Wakusubiri. Comes to an end. Unaisha today. Leo. You may not have the strength. Unaweza kosa kuwa na nguvu. To jump in. Za kuruka ndani. You may not have the finances. Unaweza kosa fedha. To start that business. Kwanza hiyo biashara. You may not have open doors. Unaweza kosa milango hiyo wazi. For that ministry. Kwa hiyo huduma. You may not have the grace. Unaweza kosa neema. You may not have the faith. Unaweza kosa imani. This man. Huyu mtu. Had no strength. Hakuwa na nguvu. To jump. Za kuruka. Ahead of others. Mbele za wengine. I declare. Natangaza. What you don't have. Kile ambacho hauna. What you don't have. Hile hauna. Hello, look ha- at me. Naam nitazame sasa. Look at me. Nitazame. Jesus did not give that man strength. Yesu akumpa huyo mtu nguvu to jump into the pool. Za kuruka kwenye birika. He gave him strength. Alimpa nguvu to pick up his mat and go home. Kuchukua nguvu za kuchukua gondoro lake na ende nyumbani. Please look at me. Tafadhali nitazame. Look at me. Nitazame. I'm saying this but prophetically to someone here. Nasema hii kinabii kwa mtu aliye hapa. God doesn't have to give you strength to jump to the pool. 
Mungu hana haja ya kukupa nguvu uruke kwenye birika. You have bigger business waiting for you at home. Ana biashara kubwa. No 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 you una biashara kubwa inayokusubiri nyumbani there is an assignment kuna kazi that is waiting you inayokusubiri i don't know sijui listen to this sikiliza hii are you ready je uko tayari are you ready uko tayari are you ready uko tayari if this guy was not married kama huyu mtu wako amefunga ndoa why are we wasting time in the pool mbona unapoteza muda kwenye birika go home, get a girl enda nyumbani pata binti Stand up we will continue with this. Simama tutaendelea na hii. Tukumaliza we just began. We did not finish. Please come here quickly. Waimbaji kundi la sifa njoni kwa haraka.